Now that we installed our library and we created a few files, let's review the reducer file we generated in the last video. And you'll notice some differences here with this reducer file compared to the reducer files we've been creating in the last couple of modules. Like for example, the state right here, we're now extending it and we're using this entity state. And this is given to us by NGRX entity. And the entity state is gonna give us a couple properties that will be added onto our state. If we review this, Go to definition and the entity interface is going to give us two properties the ids and the entities the ids is an array of primary ids in our collection and then the entities is a collection of our entities that are indexed by our primary keys so this is a really good way of indexing our entities or querying our information it's a very efficient way of doing it also, you see another difference here is now we're using the adapter. The entity adapter, again, if we go to the definition on that, right click and go to definition, this will give us a whole list of methods that we're gonna be checking out in the next couple of videos. And then also, if you check out the entity state adapter, right click on that and go to definition. This gives us a whole list of adapter methods that we could use to perform operations against an entity in our state. In this video, we're gonna add a list of entities to our store. So what we'll use is the add or the set all method to set a list of entities within our store. So to start adding products to our store, we need to start setting up some of our NGRX pieces. Like we did in prior modules, we'll set up our actions. Also, we'll need to create an effect and we'll do that in this video as well. And then we'll update our reducer. And we already have some of the boilerplate created for us, and that was generated in the last video. But we'll still need to create a few actions and also change around the ones we do have. So at this point, we'll be dispatching two actions here from our effect. One, if there is a failure at getting a list of products from our backend. And then the second action is if we are successful at getting a list of products from our backend. So we'll need two actions at this point. And then here, we'll also need another two actions because we'll be dispatching actions from two different components. One from our shopping page and the second one from the admin section. So we'll need two actions at this point. For a visual, let's look at the, the shopping page. Here on the shopping page, we'll want to dispatch an action from this component, and this is the products component. So we'll dispatch an action from here. And then if we go inside of the admin products, and you need to be logged in as admin, Click on the products and here we're loading a list of products for the administrator to manage. And also note we have some pagination here. We'll be taking care of this pagination in the next couple of videos. But in this video, we're just gonna load in a list of products. And we'll need to dispatch an action from this component. And this component is called the product list. So let's go ahead and create all of our actions. Let's go ahead and clean up all of our windows. I'll just close everything down. And then we'll open up the product action file. So product. And there it is, the second one. And we'll start on the load product. So one of them is already created for us. We'll need to just change around the values a little bit. Like for example, right here, I like to be as specific as possible describing where are we dispatching the actions from. So this is gonna be from the products list or actually the products component. In this case, this is for the shopping page. And we're gonna be loading the product. So I'll leave that just the way it is. Then here we're not passing in the products, but we do need to pass in something. We need to pass in the URL. This URL is going to have all the parameters, the pagination parameters included with it. That's how I set that up. And all of it, all it's going to be is a string. And if we actually check that out, if I open up the products component, so control P and we'll go into the products component and the component, there it is, open that one up. And right here, we're passing in a bunch of information into this create URL method. So we pass in like how many of the products do we want? What is the price range? And then we even pass in the URL and it assembles everything for me and it gives it back to me as a string. And that is what we're going to pass on to this, this action when we dispatch it. And that's pretty much it for that. And then we want to create one more very similar to this. And this one we're going to be dispatching from the products list component. So I'll just copy this whole piece right here. And just rename this, and this is gonna be load admin products. And this is gonna get dispatched from the products list component. 
and we're doing the same thing. We're loading products and we are passing in the same thing. It's a URL. That's our second action. Now the third action is going to be for if we're successful at loading a list of products. So uh, that here, just paste it in and then add on success and on to the end. This is going to be dispatched from the effect file. So I change this to effect. And this is going to be load product success. And here we're going to be passing in the product. So we're going to be changing this in the next couple videos. Like in the next couple videos, we're going to be passing in pagination parameters. But for now, I'm just going to pass in the products. And that's going to be an array of products. And then we want to take care of our failure. And I'll add on failure towards the end here. And here as well. And here we're going to be passing in the error and all that's going to be is a type of any. So error and the type of any. And that is it for our actions. So you want all your actions to look like this. And I'll give some space here, clean it up a little bit. Also, I like to add comments. It kind of breaks up all these actions. So all of our load actions, these four here, I'll add a comment for that. And as we go, I'll just keep adding comments. So this be our load product actions. I'll clean it up as well. So that's what you want your actions to look like. So we can save this file. And now we're ready to set up our effect. Our effect in this case is going to be listening for two actions, the load admin products action and the load products action. If any of those actions get dispatched, our effect will kick in. And then our effect will try to communicate with our service and get a list of products. If it's successful, we'll dispatch an action for that. We already got that created. And if there's a failure, we'll dispatch an action for that as well and update our store. Let's jump into our effect file. So you want to go into the product effect file. And the first thing we'll do here is bring in the service we're going to need inside the constructor. So I'll add that on to towards the end here. And we'll pull that in and we'll pull it in from the resource folder. And the file is called mock product API. And if we take a peek at that, so I'll right click, go to definition. And then here you should find a method called get products. And we're passing in a URL. This is the same URL that we're passing in as a payload to our actions. And here we're returning an observable of pagination result. This is just a interface that I've created. And if I go to the definition on that, here you can pass in any type. In this case, we're gonna pass in the product array. And that, in this case, is what we're gonna get back as the result. And this is what we're after. This is what we're gonna put in our store. Later on, we're gonna be setting up our pagination. And this pagination is a whole object of strings of URLs, the first URL, the next URL. And we'll be getting into this in the next couple of videos. But what we're after for now is just this result. And that's what we're gonna be getting back from this method that we're gonna be calling from within our service. Back inside the effect, the next thing we want to do is bring in our actions and I'll import those at the top. So whenever we want access to our product actions, we'll just call on this. And now we're ready to create our effect. I'll add the effect at the top here and I'll use a snippet generator I've been using in the last module. And if I enter in A like this, it gives me a whole list of different snippets I could automatically generate. If you miss those videos, you could always go to the extensions and search in the extension marketplace, you could look for Angular Snippets version nine, made by John Papa. That's what I'm using here to generate these snippets. So if I re-enter that, so A, and I want to use the Create Effect API, and it just fills in all that information for me. And I'll call this Load Products. And then the feature actions is what we just brought in. So that's going to be the product actions. And the first action we'll listen for is the load products. And the merge map is what we'll use as the operator. And I'll pull that in from RxJS. In this case, we're going to be passing in a payload from this action. So I'll make sure I include this action. We'll pass this in. And then also we want to take care of this of type bring that in from ngrx. And what's great about this of type is you can listen to as many actions as you want. So we want to listen to two actions, the load products and then the load admin products. And that's going to be the load admin products. 
both of these are passing in the same payload of a URL string, and that's what we'll get from this action here. The API source is the product service that we pulled in, so I'll call on that. And we want to call the method we were just checking out, and that's the get products. Pass in the URL from the action. Now, if we're successful at getting some information from this method, then we'll call on this and return a load product success. And we want to pull in the map from RxJS. And then this is going to be an array of products for now. We're going to have to come back and change this, but this is going to be the products. And we're going to get that from the data result. And that should be our products information. And then the last thing we want to do is catch the error if there's any errors, return a observable. So we want to bring in the of from RxJS and we'll return the load product failure and we'll pass in the error. And the last thing I want to do is add in a comment here so we can keep everything nice and organized because we're going to be adding more effects to this file as time goes on. And this is what you want your effect file to look like. So we're coming along now. We got our actions created. We got our effect all set up. Now let's set up the reducer. Now we make a full circle and we're back on the product reducer file. And we'll start at the top and work our way down. So inside the state interface, we're gonna add one more property as it says here that you can add additional properties. And we'll add one for the error. So if there's any errors at loading a list of products, we'll set our state for this. And now that we did this, we're going to get an error for our initial state because we need to set initial state for our error. I'll add that here and I'll just set it to null. And you'll notice a difference here. Before we didn't use this adapter get initial state when we were setting up our initial state in prior reducers, but now we're using the method that this adapter gives us called get initial state. We're passing in an object. And what's great about this is you can even hover on this and it'll tell you what you need to set up here. Now you'll notice down here at the bottom here, we have an error. The reason we have this error is because we changed this load products action. This is passing in a URL now, and it's not passing in a products. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out of here and remove the space here, clean it up. I'll move it to the top so everything's together. We can see everything. And now we want to listen to the load product success. That's how we're gonna get our products for now. And that error goes away. And then we're using the adapter set all. So this is going to return a copy with our updated products in our store. And then we want it to do one more on method. And this is going to be for the failure. So I add on failure towards the end here. And here we're not using any adapter. We'll, we'll just move this. And then we're going to be returning a object. So return object with the current state, copy of the current state. And then also the updated error because this was a failure. And it's going to be from the action.error. And that's the only changes we want to make to our reducer file for now. So you want to make sure that your on methods look like this and your current interface state looks like this at the top. Now let's use all the pieces we just assembled and start dispatching them from the two components. So back inside the TS file, the product TS file, and also the admin section, the product list component. And we'll start inside the products component. So the first thing we'll do is we'll import our actions. I'll add that at the top. So whenever we want access to the product actions, we'll call on this. And then, then our next step is to pull in our store inside the constructor, set this up. And that's gonna be from NGRX, we'll pull that in and it's gonna be the app state. And now we're ready to dispatch the action. So in this case, we'll dispatch the action from within the ng on it. And this we're gonna be replacing in the next couple of videos. But for now, I'll just dispatch the action right above it. So this, and store, and then we want to dispatch an action. And in this case, it's gonna be our load products. And that's gonna be coming from the from product actions file. And what's nice about this, it tells you what the payload you need. And in this case, it's gonna be a string of URL. So we'll make sure, sure we pass that in. So this create URL method right here returns a string. You just pass in all the parameters and it'll give you back a string. So you could just take this whole entire piece. I'll copy this and add it right here. As long as it's returning a string, you'll be fine. 
And then this section here, we comment all this out and we'll replace that pretty soon. That's it for this file. And we need to do a similar thing inside of the product list component. So I'll copy this piece right here, jump over to the product list. And at the top here, I'll add it in here. And this is going to be back a directory. So I'll make sure I add in that dot here. Then we'll pull in the store and the constructor. And then also we'll dispatch the action from the ng on it. And then this piece here, I'll comment this out. We don't need this. And we want to make sure we change this from load products to load admin. Very important. And the parameters are going to be different than on the from the products component page. It's going to be 25. And now we're finally ready to test everything. Make sure you restart the application and let's check it out in the browser. Now, if we click on the go shopping page, this should dispatch a couple of actions. So we dispatched our load products from the products component. That looks great. And if we look at the action and see the payload, we passed in the string of the URL with all the parameters built into it. So that's great. And then if we look at the second action that was dispatched, it was success. And we passed in the payload of products in this case. And if we look at the second one, the admin products, and that should dispatch from the products list component. And again, we pass in a parameter and it's a 25. That's what we set it at. And then if we check out the second one from our product effect and we pass in a payload of 25 and that should be inside of our store as well. So this is looking great so far, but what about our pagination? And we'll set that up in the next video.